Greetings Blazer fans and welcome to this edition of the BlazersEdge.com videocast. I'm Dave Deckard and our good friend Sam Tung has the day off today so that you and I can spend some quality time with Mr. Thomas Robinson. Now, ever since Robinson exploded against the Minnesota Timberwolves a couple days ago, my inbox has been stuffed with emails wondering why he's not starting in the place of the injured LaMarcus Aldridge, and why, if he's capable of playing that well, have we not seen him on the floor more this season? Now, there are good answers to both of those questions. However, they're not always readily apparent to the naked eye. Therefore, our friends at SBNation.com have sent us some video clips to assist us in exploring the follies and foibles of Thomas Robinson. So let's start by taking a look at Robinson's offense from the second quarter of a recent Portland-Denver contest. As you can see, we have Thomas Robinson at the top of the key at the elbow. And the ball is going to go to C.J. McCollum at the sideline, and then McCollum is going to go towards the center of the court, where Robinson will set a screen for him. Now notice already that McCollum moves a little early. Robinson doesn't get a great screen, but even so, C.J. gets free on this. At that point, Robinson should either roll directly to the hoop or clear out of the play to give C.J. his mismatch advantage. However, he does neither of those things. Instead, he half shuffles into the lane, cutting off CJ's driving path and bringing the second defender back into the play. As the ball gets reversed, he's going to do the same thing to Will Barton. Robinson posts up in Barton's driving lane. He wants to post pass, but the spacing isn't right to make the entry, so he ends up gumming the works again. Now he's going to grab an offensive rebound, but instead of going back up strong with it, he's going to try a tricky wraparound pass to Victor Claver, which will result in a turnover. And if you watch, at the end of this possession, instead of hustling back on defense after his mistake, he's going to stand there for a couple seconds, allowing Denver a 5-on-4, which turns into a 3-pointer for them. Here again we see Robinson on the right elbow, and once again he's going to end up in a two-man play with C.J. McCollum. Now the two players don't exactly know what they want to do in this set, and so the screen is going to be set slowly and not very well, nor will it be used very well. Notice that the shot clock has dwindled to six seconds now. Robinson is not a very good post player, his moves aren't dependable, and the ones he utilizes take a lot of dribbles and thus a lot of time. Still, he sets up in the post with six seconds to go, instead of, say, cutting toward the basket, which would either allow McCollum a lob pass, or at least would clear Robinson's defender out of the play so McCollum could make a move. McCollum also has Will Barton open on the other side of the court, but he makes like Robinson is LaMarcus Aldridge in that post and gives him the ball anyway. Robinson gets doubled quickly, he is out of options, and has to loft up a bad shot, which misses. Next possession, we have Robinson slipping the screen, but as he drives, he can't avoid the oncoming Jan Vesely. Instead of going left or right, he tries the difficult shot over the defense and misses. On that same trip down the floor, Robinson sets a nice screen and rolls appropriately down the lane, but when he gets a pass in traffic, he can't handle it. Now let's be clear, not everything you just saw was Thomas Robinson's fault. His teammates, particularly the younger ones, are not really helping him much in terms of their decision making and their spacing. However, perhaps this clues you in a little bit why playing Robinson is not just a matter of position or talent. You also have to ask yourself how many other young players you can afford to have out there on the floor with him. And you have to keep in mind that outside of Darrell Wright and Mo Williams, every player off of Portland's bench is a young player. So you see where the coaching staff might have to make decisions about playing Thomas Robinson or, for instance, C.J. McCollum, because you can't really put both out there at once for extended periods. Also, none of that really obscures the fact that everything you just saw happened in consecutive possessions in about 90 seconds of total court time, about 40 seconds of offensive time for the Blazers. When Robinson is out there, the mistakes come quickly, they're clumped together, they're very frequent. Until he cleans that up, it's going to be difficult to keep him on the floor, no matter how much potential you think he has. 
This is also true on the defensive end, as we're about to see. Now, a caveat here. Everything you've seen up to this point happened before Robinson's patella strain in this Denver game. However, everything you're about to see from here forward happened after. But keep in mind that we're going to hit hard on his decision making and on his positioning and on his technique, not so much on the athleticism. So even though we give him something of a break for having the strained patella in his knee, we also have to admit that what we're about to see still happened and still has validity. Here you're going to see Robinson fronting Timothy Mozgov in the post. Now, he tries to deny the ball, which is a great tactic if you're smaller than the man who's posting. However, he doesn't recognize when the ball moves that he is fronting a play that is no longer there. Instead of circling around, he stays out of position, causing Portland's weak side defense to collapse as it tries to help out Robinson, and Denver gets a relatively easy bucket. Following a rebound, J.J. Hickson beats Robinson down the court, even though Robinson has the shorter path. Thomas is supposed to put a body into him, push him out of position. He doesn't do that, and Hickson scores easily in the post. Again, we see Robinson on Mozgov in the post. He has a choice to make, use his quickness or use his body. He stumbles and does neither, and ends up taking a flop while Mozgov scores. So once again, we see three consecutive trips down the floor, three possessions in a row in which the opponent goes right at Thomas Robinson, and three times when they get a relatively easy bucket thanks to his defensive lapses. Now let's put this in perspective. Is Robinson that much worse off than the other young players on this team? In some ways, no. Every player has growing pains. That's understood. But in some ways, a lot of his teammates are farther ahead of him in terms of their development and their understanding of their place on the floor. And that means that Coach Stotts can play them without incurring the same kind of penalty he gets when he plays Robinson, even though Robinson's talent might be fairly boundless. That might correct itself in the future if Robinson works hard on his technique and his recognition and that kind of thing. But for right now, asking him to play longer minutes is kind of a stretch until he gets some of those things taken care of. That's going to do it for us. We hope you enjoyed it, and we hope you join us again very, very soon on the BlazersEdge.com videocast and keep up with everything Blazers-related on BlazersEdge.com.